So keeping with this theme of uh, end of the year, planning, reflecting, looking toward the next year, um, I wanted to kind of cover this topic real quick. And that is, um, you know, coming out of November, a lot of people's benefits, employee benefits will recycle or, you know, roll over and they got to look at it for the next year, uh, re-enroll. Yeah. And it's it's a thing. So that's probably See, health insurance pretty jump to the roof. Fresh on your mind, right? It's always in the cost of benefits are always on your mind and all of those things. You know, are you taking care of your employees is sort of in the back of your mind. So I wanted to just sort of pose this question and talk through a couple points, um, some some ideas that I have and get your take on um kind of how, how you handle it. But um if I, I guess the question is if if I'm an employer, um at this time and I'm, I'm looking at benefits and vacation and time off and salaries and comp packages and all those things kind of, again, um, you know, what are some of the things that I should be thinking about? Right. So the first one I came up with, again, I have contractors that work for me, so they're a 1099. Okay. I don't have employees, so I can't really come at this from a lot of experience, um, more so than, than you can, obviously. So a couple different perspectives. The first thing that came to my mind was, Keeping with this theme of the quietly quitting that we talked about in the last episode, yeah. you know, this, this idea of like employees have a new mindset, uh, not, not by and large, but the younger, um, I think generation and work from home. And the, it's, it's very, com- it's very complex now. Um, whereas it was very, you know, structured before, um, I have found that when you involve the employee, or contractor in my case, in the conversation, you know, to the extent that you can, um, you get new and different answers about what is valuable to them, right? Um, It used to be uh, you come to work and you get a sort certain package that's sort of carved out for everyone. Everyone gets the same Mm -hmm. thing. Then it got a little bit more loose. Then you enter work from home as maybe even a piece of that uh, benefit or perk, um, or not, you know, depending on the situation and what your business is doing. Um, and then you look, you know, the surveys and, and you know, studies have come out that say um, a lot of employees, especially the younger ones, don't necessarily want more money. They just want more free time or they want more autonomy in their role or, you know, and this things like is that. where a, a lot of it gets very difficult because when That's you're right. dealing with, you know, say on the, um, you know, the HR side, mm-hmm. And when I say HR, you know, whether, you know, how you pay, you you know, obviously there's good rules on hourly and salary. So Mm -hmm. obviously you got to be completely cognizant of that. You can't put someone a salary and you're abusing them, taking advantage of them. They're not in a managerial role, but let's assume you've got all of that down. You're not doing that. And then when it comes to um, where you allocate your money, how much are you helping on 401k? You know, are you, how much of medical are you helping? Are you covering? And then um, time off. You know, remember when it started 20 years ago, it was common like, okay, you got, you know, banking holidays. Of course, there's like 10 banking holidays a year that you get paid for Mm -hmm. regardless. Um, It it is the kind of standard. And so that's where the old banking hours, you know. Yeah. But um, then you would have like, oh, here are your days you're allowed off if you're sick, and here are the vacation days. Mm -hmm. And so early on when I saw that, so you know, let's uh, roll thumb, it used to be, you know, 10 sick days, 10 vacation days. It was kind of like, Mm -hmm. I think, kind of the norm 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, what I started noticing, Gerald, you would see the employees that we're using up there, you know, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and ninth, and tenth, sixth day in December. Mm-hmm. It would piss off the other employees. Yeah. And, you know, and in their mind, they're thinking, oh, well, you know, I had those days anyways. I mm-hmm. wasn't feeling good. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to come. Yeah. But generally, you know, that could affect, you know, how other, other people, your employees or your managers treat you. Right. And then, you know, so over time you, you kind of noticed, okay, which employees took advantage of that. And it was ridiculous because then they would do that at the end of the year, which had impact to people that did schedule, mm-hmm. you know, their holidays because you wanted to have that, you know, generally for people that had children that were out, Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, they needed to be home. They yeah. couldn't have daycare. Like, okay, that, that needs to be time for yeah. 
them to be more likely to have more days off for right. them. And then, and then you work on seniority and you try, try to do it as fairly as possible and different control. So then later we went to like, okay, this is X amount of days you get, use it regardless so you can plan it out appropriately. Mm -hmm. So I do like that model a little bit. So then, yeah. you know, you're treating the people that um, didn't get sick for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, you know, you're incentivizing them because maybe, maybe they're taking better care of their health, their own point, whatever reason. But then you've got others that did use it. And it, if you went over your 10 days of sick and, you know, you could take away your vacation. So I just thought it was a much, much kind of simpler way. But whatever you do, it stinks. you got to have consistency. And it's always those outliers that you always got to watch out for because as soon as you, as an employer, you're like, okay, I see that will allow you to do this. As soon as everybody else will do that. And, yeah. and then if you deny the next person, now you're at threat. So it's, yeah. and it's always that mm -hmm. fine line. And, you know, I hate I just hate working to the lowest denominator. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, I hate putting things in place because that one person was taken advantage yeah, of. Yeah, right. You, you have know, to have your own standard. Yes. You know, you have to raise the bar to your own standard and, and not make it you know, about those one or two people because it's generally one or two people. Correct. And, you know, you'll have people that, um, you know, over the years that, you know, I, I get it. You know, you'll um, if time off with a loved one passes away. But then you, you know, you've got the set criteria of laws of who would qualify in that bereavement. Yeah. And then you have people like, well, Nana's still alive. She's going to die any day. I should spend time with her. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not bereavement, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I, I, you feel for them. Yeah. I understand. Sure. But you know, you're take your vacation. Yeah. So I, and then now when I see vendors and the fintechs where it's like, you get infinite time off and they think that that's just a wonderful thing. All they do is breed the people that go for those jobs that don't, I'm telling you, the companies that I ha have dealt with, the vendors that are just like, oh, we give four months off. Yeah. Their productivity and quality sucks. That's right. It is absolutely horrible. Yeah. And not even on top of that, they're charging you, if they're sustainable and profitable, they're charging you so damn much so they can do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, if you have a policy like that or a culture like that, that you're breeding, it's probably going to be indicative of the service you're offering the market to like, you're going to see it in kind of going back to these conversations we had about other banks and how they um, they'll pay more for pay, pay a higher interest rate on a uh, money market or, or savings than uh, you know, they probably should because they're chasing the market up and down. Mm -hmm. um, it's, but to the FinTech point where they're, they're, you know, they have a, a huge pipeline of new people coming in, but they have no, no real uh, substance of a product to yeah. serve. So they're really just trying to build something to sell and get out or, you know, whatever. They're not really building something to last that will serve the customer properly and the employees properly. So I think when you see how they run their culture, it's indicative too of how they operate in the market. Yeah. And so, you know, for us, the most important thing is, you know, having, um, ability of 401k because regardless of the market, you know, having the employer match, getting people that understand that. So they have more than just social security mm -hmm. when, when they choose to retire. Um, so th that's, you know, extremely important to us to be able to have additional benefits, to be able to provide, um, if not a hundred percent, a huge portion of base for medical, yeah. you know, to get those things out of the way, because that is what can cripple people out of nowhere right. with an accident. Yeah. So being able to take care of those and offer those. Right. And um, I think when you have kind of a good base of those HRs, then over time you start, you know, um, getting and hiring employees that have that sentiment. Okay. We're here for this for the long run, here's what's important to us. And mm -hmm. so you start bringing in people mm -hmm. that, you, you know, you yeah. share a lot of the, yeah. You know, yeah. The, I think the common strengths to the next point, it's really indicative of the culture that you want to build and need to build around the product service that you're putting in the market, the buyer that you're serving and the company that you need to build to serve all parties. So there's not a one size fits all. I think one of the other things I said is that you don't have to do it like everyone else. Um, you can look out, I think for maybe newer business owners too, they, they're looking at, well, how does everybody else do it? I think you can look out there and find decent things and you can find horrible things. Yeah. Um, but I think it's about 
um, serving your employees as best as you can serve them, serving them really well, um, not to the detriment of the comp- company or to the them. success or to them or to the buyer. Um, mm-hmm. Because everything really should be centered around why are we all here and how do we all stay here is about the buyer. Yeah. And ha- um, consistency, um, it being all laid out up front mm-hmm. and, you know, mm-hmm. Consistent and reliable, yeah. so they know. Yeah, if you have a small company with ten people and they're manufacturing chairs in a you know a butler building, it's going to look a little different than you know a bank that has a hundred employees and uh, transacts cash every day with you know MSPs. Yeah, or or go down the the, the road with restaurants or whatever. It, you know, you have to look at the type of business you're in, who you're serving, and the type of people that want to be part of serving those people, and have that conversation a little bit more nuanced and, for and that culture. I, and I like where a lot of small businesses, sometimes they will just close down for two weeks, figure, you know what, this is the time where we get all the employees off and everything yeah. out. And, and people I think can, that can work well yeah, people for can a lot plan of for that. The customers can plan for that and they appreciate it. You know, I mean, look at Chick-fil-A, they're closed on Sunday. All their employees, they, they, they say they do it for their employees. Let's say that that is completely true. Well, they're also doing it for the customer too. Cause the, I mean, you, their product is so good and their service <laughs> is so good. When do you think about going and getting it Sunday? And so you, therefore you're like, it's on your mind. I mean, it's, it creates demand. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they intended to do that to, to actually create demand. Cause there's a lot of factors that have to be involved in having a good product service. Um, but I, I think you're right. Like I, I think that type of thing can work for some companies because it allows everyone to plan leadership, employees, customers, everyone. Um, and it can actually be a differentiator in the market depending on your size and yeah. what you're, what you're trying to do. So yeah, it, it all depends, but you know, remain consistent. Um, don't always, um, it's very hard. Sometimes you got to watch out for making exceptions, even when they tar because, um, those can come back and bite you mm-hmm. to the ones that don't appreciate. Are they, yeah. um, you know, yeah. You know, they just don't truly understand that. Yes, that employee, deserve that exception you know mm-hmm. something you know something that may be happening in their life that mm-hmm. totally out of their out of their control you give them room you give them time off you give yeah. this you know i mean um well that that's why i think we, we took care of an employee that um you know spent him cancer we paid him for yeah. a whole year and yeah. kept him employed i mean anybody that would have been in that situation would have wanted the same thing so it's i think a, an easy one for people to have empathy around Right. If you're looking yes. unilaterally. Um, but I think it comes down to uh, transparency and good communication ongoing, right. With your employees, each individual and groups of employees, um, letting them know where the company is going and how they're involved and the impact that they can make is, I think goes, it's just like a personal relationship with your spouse or your child or, or, you know, your mother or father. If you're, if you're communicating and you're being transparent about, what your needs are and you're being empathetic about their needs. It takes work, Mm -hmm. right? But that's what makes people want to stick in there and do the hard work and stick and and actually say, yeah, I think we should do something for this person versus nope. It's got to be the same for everybody. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. And I, I remember I had a manager and this is going back years that, um, you know, the employee needed times off, but you know, they had used up their days Mm -hmm. And when you have three other employees like, oh, I'm willing to give up mine because of the yeah. catastrophe, yeah. you know, that's so, probably when you should make that exception. Yeah. So I, I, I had this last note here that you're speaking right to, and that is unique cultures drive or, or build unique businesses. Mm-hmm. And I, we've talked about this a lot of times, but I think the culture drives everything. And if you're trying, if you're, if you're building a culture like that, you're going to attract more people like that. If you're not, uh, you know, clients, I've worked with clients before and I can point to them and say their culture is doing this, you know, it's going down because they are going for the bottom. They're going for that least common denominator. And there, there's, there, there's a lot of shadows and, you know, miscommunication and there's just a lot of smoke that's in the midst of all of what's happening. And they're, yeah. they're, they're not hiring the right people, which makes the good people that were right mad and they leave, then they hire more bad people and it's this downward st- spiral. Uh, but if you are getting to a point where, like you said, uh, an employee wants to give up their PTO, 
then I think you're doing something right. Like yeah. that, that's a unique culture because you don't, you don't see that every day. And what it's going to do is it's going to have higher retention rates and you're going to have those people tell people that are also good that they know and they want to yeah. be around to come work. That's the goal. I know. I couldn't believe it. The manager at the time was denying that. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're going to figure this out. Yeah. 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 And that's back to the, you know, leadership being involved in those conversations and, and putting your, your hand in it and saying, okay, wait, let's just take a step back and we'll figure this out. That's appreciated by everyone. Um, and Correct. everyone is edified through the, through it. So, um, yeah. I and mean, it kind of, yeah, adds in and the ones that didn't appreciate it, you know, do you, you know, they like get, um, the other ones, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like a pecking order with chickens. They just, they, they will, they will create their own order. <laughs> people do. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, hopefully that's helpful for people who are re looking at this and, and not little, not too, uh, big picture. Um, I mean, I think of the nuts and bolts of it are which health insurance plan do I pick? Right. But I think again, you don't have, don't look at what your health plans are and try to determine what your benefits are. It's like, you have to look at what, like, again, like where are you going? What's the vision here? What kind of culture am I trying to build? And what are the tools that I can manipulate in health paid, you know, time off, whatever, to start to create that culture versus I'm going to pick this, pick that, pick this because it's the last minute. And then it's going to dictate the culture that you have. Correct. And then um, thankfully, I mean, this year we had the highest insurance increase in premiums that I've ever seen in my 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. I mean, just ridiculous, over 35%. It's crazy. Across the board and uh, health insurance premium increases. Yeah. I mean. So then you. you so not only, I mean, and so it's a backlog, you know. Yeah. I mean, was that due because of, uh, during the COVID years, it was like 8%, 8%, 37% increase. Yeah. It makes me immediately think, okay, now how much do we have to grow to just offset that cost next year? Yeah. You know, to keep up where we were before. Um, and it's a lot like it's, it's a burden on top of, um, we're expecting, okay, year 10, 12, in order to not hurt your employees and push that, push the cost or the effect to them in the coming years. It's, it's the onus is on leadership and, and in the collective company to grow, to continue to grow yeah. in order to sustain these things. I mean, um, you mad that a thousand dollar policy no, went to nearly fourteen hundred dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and what are you getting for it? You getting more for it? <laughs> oh no, no, you're getting no, less probably. Maybe, maybe the same, and you know, the, you, then you have to go through yeah. every fine line. You yeah. know, did they increase a little bit on deductibles? The, you know, my cash yeah. out, did here yeah. and this and services. It, it, it's all a game. It's, it's not fair, but yeah. you know, we were able to increase our percentage too, to cover that. So yeah. that's awesome. You know, we were, we're in it with them. Yeah. Cause you're doing the planning prior. And when you get there, you're ready for plan B or plan C. Yeah. We talked about last time. Cool. All right. Well, this has been a good one. See you guys on the next one. All right.